We need to get people back in church that's going to restore the traditions of the church. Now, I don't know if this is true, but I heard rumors that he even cheats God. But do they have a heart for it? Or are they just sticking a hook in your mouth and reeling you in so you'll leave here and go with them? You and your basket need to go back to the little boy's room, have a little talk with that Deacon Hall. In comes Deacon Hall. No. Yes, he did. <laughs> now, I hear tell, he decided that we were really weren't all that bad. So he was officially returning to the church. I was praying that God would send somebody into his life to deliver him and to set him on the right path. And God sent you, the pistol-packing pastor. So you get together and solve the world's problem over homebrew and bingo, really? The Bible says in Timothy to take a little wine for your stomach and also for your chronic illnesses. <coughs> Christians? Yeah. Bible thumpers? Yeah. Man, I'm out of here. It's my time up. Here's the only thing that you have to put into your brain. That Jesus is not ashamed of you. He's just disappointed in what you've become. She slept with a knife under her pillow. And this is what she said. She said, at the first sign of a snore, I will cut you. Cut. You're not going to take me serious, are you? I am. I most definitely am. Well... Look who's here. I want you to meet Robbie Jones, new creation in Christ. That is awesome. You called my mama. So here's what I'm thinking. How about if you, the Halls, and I begin having a weekly Bible class in our homes? I like that idea because it gives us an opportunity to get to know people and also to understand what their needs are. I think so. I do. But it's tragic. Sometimes people are sick and even end up in the hospital to the point of death, and we don't even know it. And you know, it's not all that unusual. I don't know what it is. Folks get in the midst of what they perceive as a crowd and they just hold all their problems in. They won't share them with anybody. It's heartbreaking. Yes, it is. But with the small groups, I don't believe it's going to happen. And I agree. I agree. Caesar, you stick this basket in my face one more time. And I'm telling you, I... Patience, Pastor. Patience. Caesar, dear, is there any possibility that you could take this basket someplace else? How about giving it a rest? this mess I hear about you assigning me to that thug that threatened to kill me? What thug are you talking about? Don't put me in the middle of this. Don't you even think about it. Now listen here, Missy. I ooh, ooh, ooh. I do believe that's his. I'm glad to see your voice. What do you think? I don't think so. No, probably not. Now listen here, Mr. Grumpy Pants. This is serious kingdom work, and it just so happens you were the right man for the job. Didn't you, for most of your career, 
counsel young folks. Yeah, but those were kids. Older kids. And you mean to tell me that wasn't a thug amongst them? Now, there may have been a couple of them, but what's that got to do with it? Lamar, this is the point. We had to make a quick decision, and we did. Yeah, a decision that shouldn't have been made without the head deacon's input. Head de What'd he say? Head deacon. He did not. Yes, he did. So what I think I'm hearing is the supposed head deacon is not willing to offer wise counsel to a needy soul? Seems that way to me. <sighs> uh, you, uh, oh, 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 oh. Something's, so, something's coming. It's oh. coming. Yeah, yeah, it's got, I'm going to catch it. I'm, it's almost, it's there. I got it. <laughs> Deacon Hall, is there any chance that you finally told your wife exactly how much you paid for that set of golf clubs? Well, now, I, uh, I was going to, but I never <laughs> liar, got... Liar, liar, pants on fire. You lie, you fry. I think I'm going to call. I know Mary wants to hear about this. I... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm not afraid to tell her how much I pay for the clubs. I'm not scared. I'll do it. What? Oh, crazy. <laughs> I knew he'd leave because he knows how to blab my little heart out. <laughs> Caesar, come here. Caesar, don't make me get up out of this chair. Caesar, Sunday's only two days away. Oh, May, I'm so sorry about that. Honey, what you doing all the way down here? Needing my dear friend's comfort and advice. Well, it must be something big to make that drive. It is real big. Well, tell, oh, I'm so sorry. Deacon Ragan, this is my dear friend, May Rainley. Hello. Well, honey, what is it? Charles has cancer. What? Mm. I am so sorry. It's prostate. I tried and tried to get him to get yearly checkups, but he just wouldn't, big baby. Said it didn't feel good. Yeah, like what we gals have to go through each year is a barrel of laughs. Man, beg your pardon. Stage three. It's stage three. How am I supposed to take care of him when I haven't gained my own strength back? What does she mean? May had breast cancer, also stage three. I'm so weak, still so weak. I can barely take care of myself. Where will the strength come from to care for him? Well, my dear, your strength comes from the source of all strength, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, when we are weak, he is made strong. And he will show himself strong in and through you. There's something else. What? I'm afraid Charles is going to do something foolish. What do you mean? He saw what I went through and doesn't want to go through the same thing. And he says he doesn't want to put any more stress or strain on me and feels I do better without him. My goodness. What would you say if we could take some of that stress and strain up off of you? How can you do that? Is there any chance that Rand's still here? I think so. I'll go check and see. Thanks. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Oh, Rand, thanks for coming. Sure. This is my dear, dear friend, May Rainley. Good to meet you. And we got a little situation. Okay. Is he the pastor? Mm hmm. But he's got. He's got earrings. You got earrings. I know. You got, did you? You got earrings. You know that? 
Yeah, Harry? It's, it's a long story, but I mean, I just try to do whatever God wants me to do. And that's why I hang out with him. I just want to hang out with people that want to run after God with everything they've got. That's him. Me too. So, so what can I do to help? Okay, here's the story. May's husband has been diagnosed with cancer. Difficult part is that May has not yet really recovered from her own cancer treatments. So I think we just need to put our heads together, come up with some kind of plan, and hopefully sooner than later. Well, sure. I mean, that's why we're here. Anything we can do to help. Here's what I think. Because both of our ministers are small, we still can both take care of the transportation needs, the food needs, and also the cleaning needs. <laughs> yeah, we can do that. That's not a problem. We've got one other issue. May is really concerned about her husband's mental state. She's afraid that he might harm himself. Hmm. Okay. So that means he's going to need encouragement. And I do believe that by faith, he's going to make it through this. Is there any chance that you have anybody in your congregation that's a survivor? A man, preferably. Hmm. There is. His name's Wayne Tilner. He's had lymphoma three times. Three? I don't know if that's going to be encouragement. It, it is. God has shown up three times and worked a miracle, and he's now free from lymphoma. That's why he's so excited about sharing his story. That's exactly what he needs to hear. Yeah, in fact, he'll tell you himself that the biggest miracle is him being alive so that he can share his story and testimony with other people like your husband. The purpose for him still being alive. See, May, God's already at work. He's got this. He's got this. I'll go call him right now if you'd like. It's wonderful. To me, that sounds like Romans 8 and 28. All things work together for the good. Amen. Amen. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Come on in. This is Brother Wayne, and Pastor sent us over so that he can share his testimony with y'all. Oh, great, come on in. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Come on in, have a seat. Charles, we have company. Great, just what I need. Honey, they're here to help. Help with what? Dying? I can do that all by myself. Who says you're dying? The doctor. Not that it's any of your business. Charles, please. The doctor did not say that. And God is the only one who determines that anyway. And I'm proof of that. My doctor told me that I, I need to go ahead and get my affairs in order, but I'm still here. Sure enough, he doesn't appear dead to me. Very funny. So anyway, what happened? Well, the first time. First time. Yes, the first time, but let me finish. I had to go through a series of treatments. Treatments. I saw my wife go through that. No thanks. But they're still here. God brought them through it, and they're still alive. And for me, no matter how rough the treatments got, I always felt the Lord with me. Same here. He never left. And so you went through all those treatments. He was still with you? Yes, sir. And in greatest measure, the third time, after only four treatments, the Lord saw fit to heal me. Really? Yes. Cancer completely gone. Fourth treatment, huh? So why didn't he heal you the first time? Maybe so he could be here for you to understand all of your concerns and fears. Yeah, Charles, I'm sure that the things you felt, I felt. You don't want to go through this. You don't want to put your family through this. You just feel like you just want to end this thing now. Charles, outside of Christ, you are my everything. The Lord spoke ministry over us, us. Honey, without you, there is no us. Charles, the Lord and I need you to fight. 
how about we pray? Because God, He fights and He fights best. Amen. And we're going to let Him fight for us. Dear Father, we thank you for this day, for this is the day, Lord, that you have made. We give you praise and honor because you are still God and Lord of all. And we pray for Charles right now. And we do believe that you're going to work a miracle right now in his physical body. And we thank you, Lord, for your word says that by your stripes we are healed. And we believe and trust you that it is done because we ask in your name, touching and believing. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 And it is done. The repairman said he'll be here no later than three. Today. Oh, that's great. That opens me up for tomorrow. Oh, yes. All right. Hey, by the way, I keep forgetting to ask you about that nephew of yours, the one that has zero motivation to make something of himself. Was there any kind of attitude change after he added up all the costs involved in living on his own? Not exactly. You're kidding me. Well, he did the work. He got quotes for the apartment, uh, the rent, the uh, utilities, cable, insurance, and when he got up to $2,000, he quit. He quit? He quit? How come? Well, he knew that his mother was going to help him out anyway, so he said it didn't matter. Did he tell her that, that she was going to have to ante up the extra money? He sure did. And how hard did she laugh? Right in his face. <laughs> done the same thing. <laughs> so what y'all decide to do? Well, I told her that to give him at least six months after high school graduation, that if he didn't get in some type of school, whether trade or college, that he would have to move out and be on his own. On his own, as in she ain't gonna help him with nothing? Nothing. Ooh, I love that. <laughs> oh, I love that. Actually, my flesh loves that. I know, but in truth, I think there's a much wiser way to handle it. Like what? Like, why don't we try and figure out why he's not motivated? And how do you do that? Ah, using a very unique technique. Just ask him. You are such a smart aleck. I know it, my middle name. <laughs> Look, can either you or his mom Talk to him, get him in here. Let me spend some time with him. I mean, we can try. Y'all can do it. Find out when he's willing to come in. I'll clear my calendar and spend some time with him. I know, all goofing off aside, the truth of the matter is, if you can change a youth, you change generations. It's worth the effort. Okay. <sighs> okay. So I told him I thought I could meet with him, but I don't really know. Oh, honey, hello, come on in. Sit down. Gina, this is Mae Tillman, dear, dear friend of mine. Oh, hi, how are you? I'm oh, fine. Hi. Good. My, my, somebody's countenance has changed. It has, because God is surely on the move. Well, I like the sound of that. What happened? Ray and Deacon Raglan prayed for Charles, and his tumor shrank right on the spot. Glory to God in the highest. We're so excited. Wait, tumor? What happened? What? Her husband was diagnosed with prostate cancer, stage three. And his tumor was bigger than a golf ball. Wow, that's really big. But doing prayer, it shrank down to the size of like a like a hazelnut. Sorry, got to repeat myself. Glory to God in the highest. We're so excited. But wait, he wasn't completely healed. But that's all right, because now 
Charles knows that God is with him and he no longer wants to end his life. I tell you, if it gets any good in this, I'm going to get out of this chair and I'm telling you, I'm going to do the hallelujah two-step. Oh, God is good. <laughs> Lynn, I want to ask you something. Anything. Wayne told us that there are two survivors in his church and they've been talking about starting a ministry to help those who are dealing with cancer. That sounds wonderful. Doesn't it, Gina? It does. As a matter of fact, you know, there are actually two families in our neighborhood. They need some help, too. But there's a problem. We'd have to work with members from Pastor Rand's church. Okay, and what's the problem with that? I'm certainly curious. They're not from your congregation. <laughs> um, how well does she know you? Evidently, not near well enough. Nay, we may be two congregations, but we are one, one, one body of Christ. And I can assure you the two families from our neighborhood could care less about what congregation folks are from. All they want is the help and they need love. Yes. Ooh, that was good preaching. Oh, honey, just go serve the Lord. Bless his people. Serve his people. Bring healing to his people. Just go do kingdom work. And I can assure you, you will always get our blessing. And if along the way you need some help, you just let us know. As a matter of fact, do you mind if I give you their name and number? I mean, they would really love to hear from you. Yes. Oh, May, honey, God is going to take this that's been so hurtful, Charles's cancer, your cancer, and use it for your good and for his glory. Just wait and see what God's going to do. Are you serious? The tumor shrunk right there while they were praying? Sure did. That sucker shrunk down to the size of a hazelnut. Ooh, that's a yay God. Yay God. Ooh. Now, hazelnut, that's still kind of big. Not as big as it was. Well, why do you think God didn't just disintegrate the whole thing? My humble thought. First, because he did shrink it, Charles is now going to know that God is a supernatural God with a supernatural hand, and he didn't mind using it. I mean, that's a glorious thing. But since it didn't go completely away, he is going to have to go through some treatments. So I think going through that experience is going to give Charles the compassion that he's going to need to minister to other cancer patients and minister to them in a really powerful way. I can see that. Yeah, it'll be a good thing. And will the church be able to help out while he goes through the treatments? Oh, see, that was another good thing. Thanks to Pastor Rand, our two churches are going to join forces and we're going to do whatever needs to be done. Well, imagine that. Churches working together. Miracle! <laughs> <laughs> but it's exciting. Yeah. You know, Lynn, when I first came in, you had that far away look like you get when something's really bothering you. You know me too well. But in fact, it's way past the bothering me stage. Mm. Maddie, I'm just consumed by this thing, and I'm telling you, I just want to sit down and cry my eyes out. For heaven's sake, Lynn, what is it? 